Well, after you spent a few days in the desert, time to head toward the water. And the Rockies have made their way to lovely San Diego to open up a three-game set at Petco against the Padres, who they are 6-4 and four against so far in 2014. Beautiful evening. Welcome upstairs, everybody. Glad, as always, that you're along with my partner, George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman. Good pitching matchup for the uh, ball game tonight. A couple of right-handers for the Rockies. Jordan Lyles, who's 6-1. and one. He's healthy again. And Jesse Hahn, maybe a name you don't know, but perhaps you soon will. He is a very talented right-hander from Virginia Tech. Yes, he is very talented. But Jordan Lyles has all of a sudden started to flash a lot of good things himself. Six innings, eight hits against the Cubs in his last start. And there was some changes made. There's been a lot to said about it. And you're talking about the changeup. Prior to this start, his last start against the Cubs, he threw it 5% of the time. You see the enormous jump to 20.4%. And I think that comes with a lot of confidence. When you have confidence in a pitch, you're going to use the pitch. Young kids are taught fastball, curveball, or slider. The changeup typically the last to come. But his changeup against the Cubs threw it 20 times. And it tells you that he had to had a lot of confidence in that pitch, utilized it, had strikeouts with it, four of them uh, to be exact, but a lot of movement, much like his sinker. And I think that's the one big thing he kind of brought to the table is confidence with that. Yet to be impressed. A guy gets hurt. He has a broken left hand. Doesn't just rehab. He rehabbed and also tried to get better in the process, and he has added a pitch that Walt Weiss believes will take him to the next level. Jesse Hahn goes for San Diego. What a revelation this kid has been. This will be his 11th start. He's 7-3 and three with a minuscule ERA, George, through his first 10 ball games. Well, there is light at the end of the tunnel. That's what they're looking at. They've always been known to be able to develop a lot of young pitchers at the big league level and bring him. He's a Virginia Tech kid. You mentioned that, a college kid with a very good curveball and very good command of his secondary stuff when behind and counts. And he's beat some really good baseball teams, guys that can really swing the bat. We're talking about the Dodgers, talking about the Cardinals. You talk talking about teams that can really get after with the long ball. That's something he doesn't have happen. He doesn't give up many home runs. Yeah, you mentioned that curveball. He has an outstanding curveball. You'll see it tonight. So Jesse Hahn for the Padres, Jordan Lyles for the Rockies. Our first time back in San Diego since the passing of the great Tony Gwynn. We'll remember the San Diego legend when we return.
Welcome back to Petco Park. Rockies and the Padres about to start up a three-game set. This is the first time that Colorado has been to San Diego since the passing of Tony Gwynn. That was eight Mondays ago on June the 16th. This statue beyond right field pays tribute to Mr. Padre, and the fans come to pay tribute to Tony Gwynn. He was a 15-time All-Star. He hit 338 in his career, won eight batting titles, and five gold gloves, and he did it all in San Diego. Former Rockies great Vinny Castilla reflects on Tony Gwynn. I remember him about his, uh, the way he go about his business. I mean, very professional player. Um, and uh, one of the most pure hitters in the game. I mean, he's uh, he was a guy that, that he can flat out hit. I mean, I mean you don't got too much pop, but he uh, he's a pure hitter, man. He go everywhere. He use line to line. 73 of Tony Gwynn's games came against the Rockies. He hit 379 against Colorado and had an on-base percentage of 457. That's third best against any opponent in his Hall of Fame career. When we come back to Petco Park, 19 Tony Gwynn drive to be exact, the Padres and Rockies try to light it up. It's first pitch next on Root Sports. Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by your neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By Inova Cancer Care, Advanced Prostate Cancer Treatment. Visit InovaCC.com. By CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Pretty night. In San Diego, rarely anything but a uh, pretty night in these parts. The Rockies will play three more ball games after this series in San Diego concludes on Wednesday afternoon. And the Padres also will come call into Denver one more time this season. Southwest batting order for Walt Weiss, as you saw, will feature Charlie Blackman up top. And in addition to Charlie, Drew Stubbs will bat second. Justin Morneau had yesterday off. Nolan Arenado, Corey Dickerson, one of the heroes from yesterday's 5-3 10-inning victory in Arizona. Willene Rosario, Josh Rutledge at short, batting seventh. DJ LeMay, who will bat eighth and play second base in front of the very good athlete, good hitter, Jordan Lyles. And on the hill, 
And as we talked about a few minutes back, Jesse Hahn, 24 year old, six foot five out of Virginia Tech. And his number is brought to you by Anova Cancer Care, painless outpatient treatment of prostate cancer. Visit Anova. CC.com. Well, one number that jumps out at you, I know you like it too. Opponent average 184. It's amazing. He's only given up 38 hits and 59 in the third. And on top of that, just three long balls for this young right hander. And he has moved through their system very quickly after the trade. Spent a little time in Double A San Antonio. He's made three trips between the big leagues, the minor leagues, and obviously here to stay. Ten starts, zero complete games, seven and three overall record. Yeah, you mentioned, George, just the three home runs allowed. He went 55 innings without allowing a home run. That's something else. So here's the first pitch of the ball game, a moving fastball that's too high, and it's ball one at 92. And the 1-0 from Hahn is on the outside corner for a strike. Jesse Hahn began his professional career in the Tampa Bay Rays organization. He was originally a sixth round pick. He was a senior sign out of Virginia Tech. He had some injuries in college. They were aware of, you know, he's one of those guys, George, that scouts would say is very projectable, but he didn't go to the sixth round. Well, projectable at a younger age when they're 17, but when you're 22, coming out of your senior year, any more of the way the draft's set up, though, if you can pitch. I mean, you know, Mark Appel turned down money out of Stanford, number one pick, and then he went over farther on down the road. Uh, same type of deal. And he's number one picked again the next year. I think if you could pitch the senior sign, uh, obviously they cut deals, a little less money, but a sixth-round draft pick, and he's moved quick. I mean, he came over in the, in the big trade with them and sent Logan Forsyth and others, came with Alex Torres. The guy that works out of the bullpen, but he's got all the ingredients. Yeah. Uh, to be a good starting pitcher, height, he's got arm length, he's got a good breaking ball, good fastball, good movement with it. And it, he had Tommy John surgery when he departed from Virginia Tech. Saw the curveball on display for the first time. Two and two on Blackman leading things off. Rockies won five to three yesterday, and that is going to be a base hit for Charlie. So a good start for Blackman. A leadoff single, and that'll bring up Drew Stubbs. Let's take a look at the Excel Energy defensive alignment tonight for San Diego. Good effort there by Alexi Amarista, who's playing for Everett Cabrera. He's got a little hamstring strain. Again, he's battled that uh, throughout the year. Smith is having a great year in left field, the former Rocky. Will Venables in center. Reimer Liriano, one of their top prospects, just called up today. That's his major league debut. So the Rockies with Blackman at first. And here's Stubbs. Charlie's got 20 stolen bases, so naturally he's going to draw some attention. Grandal has not thrown out a lot of would be base stealers, just six out of 44. Nolan Arenado handing out souvenirs. Blake Doyle in the background. Jimmy Wright seated there. Brandon Barnes directing traffic. The dugout is a little crowded in San Diego. One of the things, Petco's a beautiful park, but the dugouts are the, the smallest in baseball. No question. Reminds me of the old Detroit dugouts that uh, used to think they were a bunker. Old it's Tiger crazy. Stadium, huh? Yeah, a little more room on the stairs than there is to actually sit down here. Trying to freeze. Tommy, this ball's bunted out and fouled off. Two strike count. Stubbs batted fifth yesterday and was 0 for 3 in a couple of walks. One of the walks was intentional. Blackman at first had the day off, other than pinch hitting in the seventh. For that hit, he was three for his prior 36 at the plate. Yeah, Hickox says he's in there safe. Ron Cope was behind home plate. Hickox at first. Lance Barrett at second. And Dana DeMuth a veteran is crew. at third. Yes, it's a it's crew 
seen a few big league games. And this ball is popped up left side. Solarte makes the uh, catch. One out. Who wants tacos? Remember when the Rockies score seven or more during any ball game, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. Live Moss at Taco Bell. Now Justin Morneau will come up. Justin also had yesterday off. Said he did a great job as a cheerleader. Told me that specifically. <laughs> He said, hey, you did, but guess what? You got to play tonight. And he has played exceptionally well all year, and particularly of late. Riding a five game hitting streak. He's 10 for his last 21 at the plate. And he evidently, Frazier, does not buy into, oh, you can't hit in San Diego. He's hit against the Padres home and away with the Rockies when he was with the Twins. He has swung a bat well all year long. 318, the right side of the infield. Not quite as open what you would normally see with one out. Jerko is playing more into the pull side, basically at second base, to keep the ball up from preventing for it to find the hole on the right side, yet opening up the middle. A little unusual alignment for a double plate type depth with Morneau at the plate. I was laughing because I just saw Jerko look over to Eddie shortstop Amarist and like give the open mouth closed mouth a little late Jerko's like 45 feet away from the bag. Who's yeah. really taking the For bag? You got it. Yeah. That would be an open mouth. Yeah. He's going to have to get to the bag. He's going to have to hire a cap. One one on Morneau. Yeah, really good look at that defensive alignment. Misses with the fastball away at 91. He's doing a good job, George, holding the baseball, which aids in preventing stolen bases. Well, guys get out and they tense up. You know, you get out in that set position to steal a base and, and you're ready to go. He's trying to stay relaxed. I mean, Ricky Hender used to, Ray Hender used to dangle his hands to help relax. Charlie's got one dangle and one on the heel. Oh, nice block by Grandal. On a bad, a nasty breaking ball down and in. 75 mile an hour curveball. Trying to throw it to the back foot of Justin Morneau, and he did, but it was in the dirt. Morneau able to take it. Grandal with the block. Now, you all know this is a tough place to score. Got a good hitter at the plate, good speed at first 3 1. See if Charlie looks to run here. Nope. And it's outside ball four. So two men on with one out and that'll bring up Nolan Arenado. <laughs> on on the season 59 and a third innings just 25 walks to go with 57 strikeouts. And a walk early here to Morneau. According to Bud Black, we chatted with him before the ball game about Han. He said he is a strike thrower. But he's created a little situation now. Hopefully the Rockies can take advantage. Arenado in the series in Arizona, three for ten, including a home run. He's really been swinging the bat well. And this ball's hit to left field off the bat. It looked like it had a little bit of lift. It's going to. He covered there by Smith two outs. He got it out a little bit toward the end George just a smidgen. Two outs Corey Dickerson coming up. Let's check our big hit presented by Mako the company that repairs all kinds of hits. None bigger than two outs and a tie ball game in the 10th and you go deep left on left against Oliver Perez. He's been pitching exceptional baseball. Dickerson's 14th big fly of the year. Huge time for it. Check out your local Mako for collision repairs and auto painting for as low as 449 bucks. Visit Mako.com today. See if Corey can come through again here with two outs. Get the Rockies on the board. Fastball oh! on the inside corner. And it's 0 1. 
not necessarily where they wanted the pitch though. They wanted that pitch away. of concern about Charlie Blackman in the running game. You wonder if that took away some of his focus on Morneau that he didn't get a ball thrown for a strike. He ended up walking him. Arenado flew deep to left field with the first pitch. Man, that's way inside. It's Cut Dickerson in half. One ball, one strike. Well, when you come in and it's off the plate, you want to move the batter's feet. You don't want them to just get comfortable where they can bend backwards. You want to move their feet, make them aware you're really trying to come inside. This ball pulled down the line, and it is foul. Corey got a pretty good curveball there to hit. Got out in front just enough to get it in foul territory. 74 miles an hour with this curveball. He just got out in front just enough that it hooked it into the foul territory. One two on Dickerson fastball and he got him with a tailing heater in the inning the Rockies will leave two on a base hit and a walk no scores we go to the bottom of the first at Petco. And San Diego Rockies and Padres for the 11th time this year. There's Will Venable swinging the bat much better in the second half than he did in the first half, but still the numbers on the season not great. The 227 batting average. Here's the rest of Bud Black's lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Batting second is Jan Hervis, Solarte, Seth Smith's been their leading hitter all year. He'll bat third. Then Yonder Alonso, Jed Jerko struggling, though he had a good series in Pittsburgh. Yasmani Grandal, Reimer Liriano, again making his major league debut. One of their top prospects, Alexi Amarista and Jesse Hahn. And we're ready to go. Jordan Lyles warmed up quickly in his first pitch is down and away to Will Venable. Well, that's one thing Jordan does. He controls the tempo of the game when he's throwing strikes and getting on top of the baseball. A lot of sink. Misses with that fastball at 91 on the inner half of the plate behind 2 and 0. 
Jordan, first year in a Rockies uniform, came in the offseason from Houston, part of the Dexter Fowler deal, of course, and that fastball swung on and missed. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, Dexter rehabbing from his most recent stint on the DL in Oklahoma City now. Yeah, he's got an oblique injury. Chris Nelson, who's on the Padres now, visited with him before the ball game. He stays in close con uh, excuse me, close contact with his uh, former Rockies teammate and fellow Georgian. Here's Chris. Well, and Chris. A fastball at misses, ball four. Chris, EY, and Dexter. All three came together in the system, so it's like the fraternity brothers that uh, stay in constant contact with each other and how they're doing. Yep. Let's take a look at the numbers brought to you by Anova and Jordan Lyles. Painless outpatient treatment of prostate cancer. Visit AnovaCC.com. Watching a couple of guys that don't give up many home runs. The opposition at 248. Six home runs given up in 75 innings. He's six and one on the year, 14th start of the year. So Venable, who can run, is at first. And Jan Hervis Solarte is at the plate. Surprise Venable doesn't get more stolen bases. He has six right now. He's been thrown out four times. Got really good speed. Solarte came from the Yankees in the Chase Headley deal. Played a lot of third with New York this year. And then he takes a strike there. It's one and one. Well, the young team coming over here versus playing under the under the big lights trying to re replace Alex Rodriguez while he serves his suspension. Well, it's a great opportunity for great Colorado's opportunity. own Chase Headley. Let's take a look at some of the trades that the Padres have made here in the last month Houston Street was dealt July 18th to the Angels. He was having a, an all star year as a closer Headley as we mentioned to the Yankees Chris Norphy. I've always liked him George as a fourth outfielder He's a good player he does a lot of things well. He's now up in Seattle. I think that's a great addition that Jack Zorinczyk was able to do for his ball club. This should be two. There's one on the first and a nice tag play that? by Morneau. He had to come off the bag to field the throw by Rutledge. Well done. It's a 6 3 double play. And with two outs, Seth Smith will come up. Let's take a look at the Rockies. Defenders brought to you by Excel Energy. Visit responsiblebynature.com today to learn more. Dickerson's in left, Drew Stubbs in center, Charlie Blackman is in right. Arenado, Rutledge, left side. LeMahieu and Morneau on the right side. And Willeen Rosario is doing the catching this evening. I'll bring up Seth Smith, the one time Rocky. Played with the Oakland A's offseason deal brought him to San Diego. They've not been dis disappointed. He is really hit very, very well. He was a hero yesterday. They ended up beating up the Pirates in Pittsburgh at PNC 8 to 2. He had a three run triple to open up that ball game in the fifth and then scored on a wild pitch right after that. So yeah, he had a big day yesterday offensively 38 RBIs now. And rewarded with a two year contract extension about a month ago before Josh Burns was let go as the general manager here. He signed Seth around $13 million for two years. That's inside on Seth. And the new general manager, literally A.J. Preller there on the left, he just was named to the post a few days ago. In fact, just had his, his news conference, his press conference in the last 24 hours. That's a good pitch right there. Nice slider from Lyles. Two balls, two strikes on Seth Smith. Well, they're all in town. Randy Smith, who is in charge of the international part of their organization, plus their minor league system, is here in town along with his assistant. A lot of the scouts are here making assessments. And for him, honestly, uh, just getting to know these people in this organization. Yeah, earlier we saw him taking uh, quite a bit of notes. I mean, he's got to find he, out he's, what he's got. He's, he's, he's got to learn. I mean, he came from Texas. He's a mm -hmm. Cornell grad. 
Heck, their closer's four years older than he is. Well, he's, <laughs> he's 33 yeah. years of age, right. and their closer, Joaquin Benoit, is 37. That's high and away, three and two. Well, he's a numbers guy, and he's going to look at that. But he also, from what people have told me in the organization, that you know he's a grinder. He's going to be here early in the morning, go home late at night. Very determined now that he's had this opportunity to take over, uh, to make this organization a championship team. We'll just see how it works out for him. And that's another walk. Jordan Lyles kind of walking off in disgust. Second walk of the first inning. Two outs. Smith to first. Yonder Alonso to the plate. Time for the McDonald's McCafe pitch menu. Now at McDonald's, you can enjoy a sweet, creamy McCafe iced coffee. Well, trying to get ahead with the fastball, he throws it 66% of the time at nearly 91 miles an hour average velocity. The opposition's hit 262. All the secondary stuff gives the opposition a lot of problems. That's where he's been able to really improve on the changeup, particularly in that last start. So here's Alonso. And that fastball runs off the plate. It's ball one. Just missing. You know, a lot of times early in ball games, you try to work the corners. Maybe a good time just to pound the center of the plate and see what happens. He missed a good portion of July with wrist tendonitis. Actually been swinging it well since he came back. And it's 2-0. and oh. The story of the Padres season, George, in the first half was just how anemic they were offensively. I mean, they, they set a, an all-time major league record. They hit 171 in the month of June. And then what, what really just kept them where they were were the closer. Obviously, Houston Street, their bullpen, and some young starting staff that won some games. And Lyle's really struggling right now. He's fallen behind 3-0. and 12 balls, 6 strikes out of 18 pitches thrown so far. Not typical of Jordan Lyles. Jimmy Wright looking on with a tad bit of concern. Got that fastball over on the corner. Well, since the All-Star break, all of a sudden, uh, the, the Padres are downright offensive. 13 of their last 18 games they've won. And they've scored the fourth most runs in baseball in the second half. They were dead last in the first half. And that's another walk. This is really unlike Jordan Lyles. And here comes Jimmy Wright. Well, before the break, they didn't have a good record. They were averaging under three runs a game, which I mean, it's almost impossible to win if you're averaging 2.9 runs per game. Their batting average is 214. That's, that's for the entire first half, folks. And now in the second half, they're hitting 270, which is third best in baseball. Their ERA has remained steady. In fact, they, they've gotten even better in the second half. But they're averaging four and a half runs a game. All of a sudden, they can hit. A run and a half doesn't sound like a lot. It's huge. When you're having to go out and win a lot of games, three to two, two to one. Now all of a sudden you're scoring almost five some nights, six. Yesterday they had eight on the board against Pittsburgh. I know Bud Black's got to be happy with the results. I mean, he's got a new general manager. And uh, I like the quote today on uh, one of the websites, MLB Trade Room, is they said Bud Black would be out of a job for about two minutes if he got fired here. Absolutely. And I, don't, and I just don't see it happening here no. anyway. He is so well respected and he's done a terrific job in a in a very small market. It's been devoid of stars really, you know, since Nevin was here and Klesko, Klesko was here and, and, that, and, and that and that really overlapped the end of the of Tony Gwynn's career. And Qualcomm, though it was a pitcher's park phrase, you pitched there, it played differently than Petco. Oh, there's no question. Plus, they moved the walls in. You know, it made it a lot shorter than what it used to be. It used to be the high brick walls, and then they brought everything in about 15 feet. They've done so here, too. They brought the fences in, added seats, trying to get some home runs hit. And I think in a ballpark like this, you know, honestly, what I would do, I would astroturf the field, go back to the 80s, and get me a speed team. Because you're not going to hit home runs. I mean, you're right on next to the ocean. The ball's not going to carry. Well, I don't know if I'd change anything because they're 31 and 27 at home. Doesn't sound great, but it's the best home win percentage, believe it or not, in the division. 
It's better than what the Dodgers have produced at yeah, Dodger but, Stadium this you know, year, better than what the Giants have done at AT&T, better than what the Rockies have done. The Rockies usually have a great home record. My point is you have Jerko at, at second that hits a lot of home runs. You have Alonzo to hit a lot of home runs, but they don't have a high average. Two balls, two strikes on Jerko, and swung on and missed. Jerko strikes out. So an uneven first inning for Jordan Lyles, but one without damage. You can take that to the dugout as we go to the second. Mario Rutledge and LeMayhew, six through eight in their lineup in the second. Gas Lamp District, the heart of San Diego, just uh, literally about a block and a half away. A reminder, tweet your questions using the hashtag Toyota Talk, and we'll get to as many as we can during our Toyota Talk inning. That will come in the fifth. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Mark Stout on a Monday evening in San Diego. Petco Park, moderately filled. Is that a kind way to say yeah, that? It is. I mean, they got more people than I anticipated. The upper deck's got some people in it. They're scattered. If you put them all in here together, it might look a little better, but you kind of bring them in a little closer. <laughs> but it isn't a bad crowd. No, not, not, at not all. for a Monday night. Nope. So Rosario steps in, swinging the bat better. Jesse Hahn ready to go, and his fastball's a little bit high. Ball one. Hahn. Allowed a hit and a walk in the first inning. The Rockies could not take advantage. Rosario yesterday, two for five, including a home run that tied up the game at three, and it remained so until extra innings. Rockies dodged a bullet course in the bottom of the ninth inning. And you got to like where he hit this home run yesterday, George. Right center field on a fastball that cut over the middle of the plate. Typically, you'd like to take that baseball and drive it out of the ballpark to left field. But when you start to see those hands stay inside the ball and thinking to the right side with some authority, it's pretty good. And he tried to stay behind that baseball, and it will land in the glove of Liriano. So the first opportunity for the kid to make a defensive play in the outfield in his major league debut. One out, Josh Rutledge will come up. Rutz hit. Quite a bit in the two spot in the lineup of late tonight down in the seven hole. Walt shaking up his lineup against the right hander. He has Stubbs batting second. Of course, Cargo's on the DL. We'll learn a little bit more about the injuries and where exactly things stand with Carlos Gonzalez, with Brett Anderson, with Troy Tulowitzki in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. We'll pass that along when we get the information. That pitch is right down the middle, strike one on Rutledge. Josh one for eight in the Arizona series. He had a double. Came off the bench as a pinch hitter yesterday. Culberson got the start at short. If he can't get the breaking ball over, I'm not sure his fastball is overpowering enough 
to get through this Rockies lineup. And right now he hasn't been able to show whether he can get the curveball over. Minnesota beat him in his last outing. Speaking of Minnesota, they picked up Josh Willingham today. They sent him over to Kansas City for a, a young right hander, last name Adam, big kid, 6'5 and about 220. He's 22 years old, already in double A with a big arm. I mean, he can rush it. And the Royals trying to oh. add a bat. Two balls and two strikes on Rutledge. First curveball he's throwing for a strike, but if you notice it up in the right hand box where it's his pitches, it also has velocity when the pitch is thrown. He backed off to 73 miles an hour. He'd been up to 78 with that curveball. A lot of times you try to add velocity, you'll yank it. In other words, you yank it out on the front side, and that carries it out of the zone. Stayed on line pretty good with his front side on that curveball. Yeah, there's a curveball, but that one's well off the plate. It's three and two. But I don't understand why Grandal would set off the plate on a two-two count on a curveball. I mean, if you don't put the corner, that's fine. Otherwise, move over to the center of the, uh, the plate line. It's always curveball. You're asking for him to throw to an area that's going to create a ball early in the game. He got away with a high fastball there. Yeah, mislocation. We got a second strikeout. Two outs. That'll bring up LeMahieu. Rockies took just one of three down in Arizona. The win yesterday snapped a six game losing streak against the Diamondbacks. Rosario and Walt Weiss conferring. DJ hitting 351 against the Padres. Here's the one one. Oh, it's a sink on it. You know, we're talking all about Han being a young pitcher and he is. He's the 11th major league start. But he's 24. And Jordan Lyles is 23. Yeah. Jordan Lyles signed out of high school versus college. I think the one thing you notice with him. This ball's pretty well hit at Liriano and he. He lost it in the bank of lights for a moment, but he makes the catch. A one, two, three second inning for Jesse Hahn. No score at San Diego back in a
San Diego, no score. Padres and the Rockies. Jordan Lyles on the hill through a lot of pitches in that first inning. You probably have heard that while he was on the disabled list, he worked on a changeup. He had a circle change, changed the grip while he had some downtime, and threw it 20 times in his first start back from the DL against the Cubs, and it worked. For the most part, I felt pretty comfortable throwing it anytime when I was down making rehab starts. I, I challenged myself and I would I would do it. I would use it when uh, when I was behind 2-0, 2-1, just to make sure I get a feel for it and make sure I can throw it over the plate. So uh, I feel comfortable with it right now. I, I doubt I'll throw it 3-0 anytime soon, but um, yeah, if it, it, it's a uh, come along pretty nicely. Hey guys, he really thinks that this is going to do wonders for his career, this new changeup. And I know, George, you talked about it in the pregame. I don't know how many he's thrown yet tonight, but we'll see it. Now yeah, the one-two curveball there is fouled off after he got ahead with a, a one-one curveball. George, it, it's a tough pitch to command for a lot of pitchers, isn't it? Well, it is. And I had a pitching coach going, you know, first sign in the minor leagues, Al Widmeyer, who I admired. Uh, great guy. He would force starting pitchers at the minor league level. He wouldn't take away their curveball or slider, but he'd say you're going to throw 10 changeups in your start. I don't care when you throw them. You throw all 10 of them right as soon as the game starts. I don't care, but you're going to throw 10 changeups. And it gave him confidence in the pitch. The 10 turned into 15 usually. 18 in a start where they threw 100 pitches. Back in time, different time and error, obviously. He, he just threw it right there. Yeah. And so what you do is it's a confidence in a 2-1 count. Bam, changeup. Yeah, 3-0. No, you're not going to throw a 3-0. You just hope you don't get to 3-0 and a lot. And, and it's kind of a cross strip between a circle change and, and the Vulcan change, split change. Well, it's a different type of grip. I mean, you know, they're calling it a split change in the newspaper. But in, in, in that's, reality. That's one he did. And, and that commit. was a bad one. Uh, you know, and I, and I think that's where, um, you know, people get confused just because the fingers get split apart a little bit. They think it's a split finger. And, it, and it's not. I mean, a true split, which we talked about, I've shown you many times, uh, is a whole different type of grip on it than, than what they're seeing. So uh, I think that's probably part of it, too. Three and two on Yasmani Grandal. Reimer Liriano is on deck. It'll be his first big league plate appearance. Wonder what's going through his mind. Like a lot of guys. Uh, Swung on and missed. He gets a strike at Liriano's doing something, George. I haven't seen anybody do all year. He's actually standing in the on-deck circle. Yeah, they He's don't the do first. that. <laughs> yeah, well, they told him. They put the circle out there, but nobody uses it. That's just uh, a place for the pine tar, the weighted bats, and everything else just to kind of relax down on the field. That's a big guy. I mean, you look at him. Big, broad shoulders, obviously. Uh, somebody that uh, I like big, broad shoulders and I, on hitters and throwers. Well, he, he's check this out, George. I mean, he's built like a linebacker. He's six foot, 230. And the numbers that we showed you at AAA, ridiculous. And at double A, they were very impressive as well. More power numbers in double A. 240. I mean, he had like 240 in double A, but he had 14 home runs, 58 RBIs. And, and they bumped him up to AAA. Now all of a sudden he's stealing bases. He's doing a lot of different things. Yeah, he's uh, got doubles, triples. Yeah, he's got all the tools, as you're saying. He he stole 20 bases this year between the two levels. Early and on. they they Frazier, they haven't had many of these kind of guys. They haven't had many really good offensive prospects of late. No, they haven't. I mean, you go back to Logan Forsythe, but he's more of a line drive second baseman. He gets traded. Talking about Jed Jerko. I mean, they gave him a lot of money, 35 million, because he hit some home runs for half a season. Sorry, I'd love you, Jed, but I probably wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have given you $35 million. I want to see you do it over a period of time. Yeah, he's hitting 185 this year. He's the 1-1 to Liriano. And that fastball just a smidgen inside, so it's 2-1. and one. Well, two different things you do with young kids. You pound them in to see if they can handle it, or you run the breaking ball away to see if they can handle the spinner. I mean, it's just two different things you do as a pitcher when they first come up. We'll see where they go back in. If they do or not, they went to uh, the slider, switched off. They're going to go back in with the fastball. See, I mean, he just swung over the top of that hard sinker at 90. I mean, the bottom fell out of this thing. Like you'd roll the ball off the top of your kitchen table, and it just disappeared under the bat. Boy, that's a nasty pitch. 2-2. Two -two. See if they go in there again. Ask for... Soft curveball away. 
Straight Got three. Him. Yep. Locked him up. But after after pounding in, it buys you. It just opens up so many other things in the strike zone. It can either be the curveball, be the slider. You go to the changeup. Once you wear a guy out inside, he moved his feet early in the count, and this one just froze. He started to fire at it, and then once he started to fire, it was like, oh, 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 uh oh, too late. Yeah, that sick, that sick feeling where you realize, boy, that's a strike, and you have to walk back to the dugout. Three straight punch outs now for Lyles, and that's strike one on Amarista. Amarista playing short again for Everett Cabrera. That hamstring acted up on him again before the ball game yesterday, mm -hmm. and he couldn't go. And he was out a good portion of July with the hamstring injury. Nice pickup by Rutledge on the move. Well done, and a terrific second inning. For Jordan Lyles that included a couple of strikeouts. So we'll go to the third, no score at Petco on a pretty Monday night. Sports is brought to you by the Ford F-150. It's not just a truck, it's an F-150, and it's built for tough by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Bluebell Ice Cream and by University of Colorado Health. Petco Park at San Diego. Warm-up pitches in the third inning complete for Jesse Hahn. Jordan Lyles will lead it off in the top of the order. Rockies two and two at Petco so far this year. Haven't been here since pretty early in the season. So Lyles, who's serious about his hitting, steps in. And that fastball runs in. It's ball one. Kind of a weird schedule for the Padres, George. They were just in the Midwest for five games. Two against the Twins, three in Pittsburgh against Clint Hurdle's Pirates. They're home to play the Rockies for three, and then they go out for ten ball games. That is strange. Uh, that you know, you, you, the Rockies had one of those earlier in the year where they only came home for three and back out again. Well, the Rockies' schedule last year, at least in my memory, maybe it's because it's still fresh. That was a really tough schedule, and, and the season ended with five consecutive. 10 game road trips. Mm -hmm. And that's a walk to Lyles on four pitches. So Lyles struggled with his command in the first inning, straightened it out in the second. Han has now walked a couple of hitters in the ball game. And of course, the last thing you ever want to do is walk the leadoff hitter if it's a pitcher. Yeah, they don't want to do that. I mean, that, that'll drive a manager crazy. RBI baseball is back with all 30 team major league teams and 2014 players. Get the retro two button style baseball game uh, you can been missing. Visit the game on RBI.com for more information and details or download today. Not many strike ones. 
38 pitches, 20 for strikes. They had a group meeting that time on the mound. Who's quick? Grandel, Alonzo, they all came in to visit. Most people complain about hitting here. I was talking to Charlie Blackman before the ball game, and he said he likes playing here. First of all, everybody likes the weather. That's understandable. But he said the hitting background's really good. Most guys that complain oh. to hit here, what are they? Power hitters. Guys that are line drive gap hitters, they don't mind playing here. But when you're a power hitter and you still continue to try to utilize that power, you get frustrated. Charlie had a base hit up the middle to start the ball game out. One and two. Charlie hitting 290 against righties coming in, 270 against lefties. Hans, a native of Connecticut. And then went to Virginia Tech. Another curveball. A lot of northern guys do that. Colorado kids, they take off, head down in Louisiana, Florida. You know, they go to some of the mid-level to places like Kyle Freeman with Devonsville. By the way, he went four innings tonight for Asheville. And Asheville ended up getting beaten that ball game. Uh, he gave, went 44 hits, a couple of runs, one earned, one walk, two strikeouts. He gave up a home run. His first run. Uh, given up in a full season ball club with Asheville. They lost four to three to Savannah. They don't lose many in Asheville this year. 76 and 44. They got a four game lead. I had a baseball executive tell me it's one of the best minor league teams at that level he's ever seen. Well, I would agree with him. There's some players there. We'll look at it a little more closely uh, as the game progresses. Two balls, two strikes on Charlie. This ball's pretty well hit left center field and moving over to make the catch is Venable. That's a perfect illustration of what we talk about with the marine layer that comes in in the evening. That ball off the bat was barreled. That ball off of the bat anywhere at Coors Field, Texas, Cincinnati is probably off the wall or over the wall. I mean, hit that ball very well. One out. Lyle still at first base. Drew Stubbs will come to the plate. Subaru brings you the manager's challenge if there's a questionable call. Instant replay will be used to determine the outcome. It's brought to you each night by Subaru. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Stubbs takes high ball one. Drew popped out to the left side. His first time up. Third baseman Solarte making the catch. Padres in third place in the division. Rockies. Right now at the bottom of the division. So he went curveball 2 0. He has had very poor fastball command so far, which is not what his resume states. And that's just on the corner, barely. 2 and 1. Playing behind Lyles at first, and that's a strike also. Two and two. Well, here's what's happened since the All Star break. In the division, I don't know many people that would have guessed this. The, the Padres, by a percentage point or two, has a better record than the Dodgers. They have the best record in the second half in the West. Curveball, and it swung on, and foul tip is held. So Drew Stubbs is gone. And the Padres have been doing it with equal mix great pitching, which you kind of expect with them, especially at home. But also, as we illustrated earlier, their offense has been much improved in the second half. That's yeah, the that 13 and 8 record. Yeah, the offense has been really good in the second half. I mean, they're scoring more than, or running a half more than what they did in the first half. Their average of 279 instead of 230 something. 
Actually, it was 214 in the first half. That's how bad it was. Strike one on more no. Justin walked his first time up. Lyle still at first base. Second best batting average to Tulowitzki in the National League. Now he's getting that curveball over. It's a great equalizer. When you can throw two pitches for strikes that have a disparity of, you know, 15 to 18 miles an hour. It makes a huge difference for hitters being able to adjust to it. They just don't stay, can't adjust to the velocity. He went curveball again, and it's rolled toward EY. That's the kind of ground ball you like when you're first base coach. You know, if you watch his delivery and you watch at the very end, he, he's kind of what they call, scouts call, he's got a little head whack. In other words, he takes his head and kind of throws it to the left side to clear his arm on the curveball. But it's not something at age 24 that you try to change, particularly when they're 7-3 and, and a 228 earned run average. You let him roll with it. And obviously, he had great numbers while pitching in double-A this year that earned him the opportunity to come here. Nine earned runs in 40 and a third innings. 201 earned run average over 12 starts. Two and one record. Well, since June 1st, Lowest ERA as a starter. Clayton Kershaw, we've heard, is pretty good. Yeah, he, Cole, play, he plays in another league. Yeah, Cole Hamels, Henderson Alvarez with Miami, Doug Fister, Adam Wainwright, and Jesse Hahn. This ball's poked to right, and Liriano can't make the catch, and Lyles is going to end up at third base. What a piece of hitting there. You know what that was? That was Dickerson-esque. You know how Corey will reach down and take one off the ground? That's what... Justin Morneau was forced to do on that curveball. First and third with two outs. And you got a rookie in right field, Lariano, that has not played here in this ballpark any games whatsoever. So he goes down, gets the curveball, and it shows his strength, too, to keep that ball on the line, to hit it as deep as he did. Froze for just a second, and I think positioning defensively, that ball had a lot of top spin to it, and it just landed in front of Lariano's glove. You started to see a little bit of that arm strength that he can demonstrate. He's got a strong arm. Yeah, Justin just keeps on going. Another base hit. Yeah, Morneau with a six-game hitting streak. He's 11 for his last 22. Here's Arenado. And the breaking ball misses to Nolan. Nolan just missed crushing one his first time up. Got, to, got a little bit off to uh, the end of the bat. Hit a fly ball to left field. Rockies have the only two hits this evening. They're batting in the top of the third. One one that's off the play. Combination of ballpark and really how good this pitching staff is for San Diego. The opposition's hit just 216 at Petco this year. Two one. Fastball and it's in the air to Liriano. That'll end the inning. The Rockies got a hit and a walk. They'll leave two on in the third. No score.
Jordan Lyles. Time for the injury report brought to you by University of Colorado Health. Michael Kadire tore up the Pioneer League, got elevated. He's now in the Texas League. Five games with Grand Junction. He had 579, including six doubles, nine ribbies. He'll be in Tulsa, Oklahoma tomorrow when they take on Midland. And uh, hopefully, as things continue to go well, we'll see Michael over the weekend along with Todd Help. So Todd won't be playing. No, he won't be, but I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Absolutely. See him around the ballpark. Exciting time this weekend at Coors Field. If you don't have your tickets, get them. On take strike one. That's on the outside corner. It's 0 and 2. Well, get to the ballpark early Sunday, August 17th, as the first 15,000 are going to receive a retired 17 bobblehead gnome, courtesy of Coca-Cola. Gates are going to open out two hours prior to the ball game and be in your seats to witness the first ever Jersey retirement ceremony in Rockies history, and justifiably so. I'm looking forward to the day. Sunday will be a great day in Rockies history, as there was for so many years to watch Todd play the game. You know, a lot of teammates, ex-teammates are coming back. Going to be a part of that. And Hans gone. That's four strikeouts. First time through the batting order for Jordan Lyles. And that'll bring up Will Venable. Strike on Venable. Venable walked in the first inning. And another good fastball. It's the placement, too. I mean, it's 90 miles an hour, but it's where it's located. It's got good movement on it, late life on it, as they say. Venable hitting 333 over his last 26 games. To raise his average to 227. Checked his swing. How about this? I mean, would, would you have thought this at the start of the year? I mean, Kansas City with a good baseball team. They beat Oakland 3 to 2 tonight. Detroit loses. Now they are in Dead. first place by half a game. That, that's something. They were in first earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, they're in first now. That's out of play. Kansas City, Detroit, then Cleveland's five and a half back. The White Sox nine, Minnesota eleven and a half. Here's the American League Central. And as George said, they're now eleven north of five hundred. Moved in front of the Tigers. Indians hoping to participate in the postseason. Had a little more giddy up there. Jordan would hit 94 95 earlier in the season. We haven't seen that on the gun yet tonight. But Arm's still coming. He's average. I like it. 2 2 change up. Wanting to throw it into the strike zone. Just missed. A late run. Nobody on one out. Three and two on Venable. He's got some pop. Hit 20 plus home runs last year. We always want to change things up because Will called timeout and then he looked back. Kind of a veteran move to see where Rosario was set up. Line to center field right at Drew Stubbs. Two outs. You know, I remember back all the time Jason Jennings pitched really well here and he said sinker ball guy with a slider. Throw it down the middle, see how far they hit it. And that was his theory here. He just said, you know, throw it, if you want to throw a little elevated fastball and they get it up into the air, no big deal. Of 
Wells Fargo customers get your two-for-one Rockies club-level seats today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies. Wells Fargo Bank, member FDIC. Jan Hervis, Solarte at the plate. You like that name. I like Solarte. You do well on the first one. I'll do the second one. How's yeah. that? Uh, we'll tag team it. I don't know how well I do, but. Or how about if I just say Solarte number 27? It's a little easier, isn't it? <laughs> a whole lot easier. I guess his name, Jan Herbis, is a combination of his, both his parents' names. Two balls and a strike on the former Yankee. Hit 254 with the Yankees this year. Six home runs, 31 driven in. Mostly at third base, 13 games at second. He had one start at shortstop. Changeups way outside. Three and one. From Venezuela, originally signed by the Twins back in 2005. Padres have used him a little bit in left field. Got three starts out there. It's a pretty good bat. They're just trying to figure out a way to where maybe he could be as productive. I think Bud Black, uh, as you go into this season, when they were in kind of the same shape the Rockies were at the time, then they started winning some baseball games. Let's move some pieces around. Let's just see what we have. Three, two. And a ground ball that's easy pickings for DJ LeMayhew. At seven straight, retired by Jordan Lyles. We'll go to the fourth, no score. No score, Rockies and the Padres. Time now for your cool stat of the day from Steel T Heating and Air. There's never a trip charge for a repair. That's a $69 value. Steel T, the T stands for trust. Go to steelt.com. This has to do with EY, who you see is coaching first base. EY hit his first home run off of Bud Black. Back in 1992, his first year in the bigs when he was with the Dodgers. Bud Black, of course, the manager of the Padres. EY told me that he threw him one of those cutters that he always throws inside, and he yanked it down the line at Candlestick when Bud Black was pitching for the Giants. Now, his last home run of his career came at Coors Field when he was playing for the Padres. That was in 2006. Hit it off Jeff Francis. He said Francis threw him a changeup, guys, and he took it to left field at Coors Field. Always fun to talk to EY about his home run. So that's our cool stat of the night from Steel T. Well, you know, it's funny. Pitchers don't remember those home runs, but hitters remember every one of them. Pitchers would like to just forget about it. You know, EY carved out quite a career for a guy that heard numerous times 
he's not going to be able to make it. Well, you know what? When you looked at him, he could run. You go, okay, what else can he do? Well, he can run. You know, but then he learned that uh, Tom Greenwood, old scout, a friend of mine, is no longer with us. So if they can run, I'll teach them to hit 260. I'll teach them to steal some bases. Teach them to play some different positions. You notice in that first at bat what he did to Corey Dickerson? Made his feet jump around a little bit. He did it again here with a second pitch. Came hard in. Big swing fouled off. Well, EY did better than 260. Finished at 283 in his career. 79 home runs. Drove in 543. Stole 465 bases. He had quite a run. Sharply hit to short. Amarista's got it. And Dickerson is retired. Rosario will be next against Jesse Hahn. Scoreless in the fourth inning. Now despite the very disappointing record for the Rockies 46 and 71 coming in they've actually played well against the West the season starts so frequently with a lot of games inside the division so the Rockies are 22 and 24 this year against the West and they're 11 and 11 out on the road against the West which stands in stark contrast to the fact that they're 18 and 41 overall away from Coors Field and even with the win yesterday, they've lost 20 of 23 away from 20 at the play. That's good play by Jed Jerko to get Rosario. Two hard hit balls, Dickerson and then now Rosario. I don't know if you could hit any balls harder than what either one of these guys did. Just happened to be right at it, but Jerko makes a nice backhand stop. And because of the ball being hit so hard, it allowed him to get up to the knees and then make the throw on the first base to get Rosario. And that ball's a bullet. Two hop line drive, backhanded. Does he remind you? I'm trying to think of what player, body type, everything. It reminds that is is that Ugla? He he's a little like Ugla. Well, what's the other guy? I'm thinking of another guy too that played here, not Kuzma, but Kuzminov. The, the Kuzminov. Yeah. His no. dad. No, his dad played in the big league. Burroughs. Sean Burroughs. A little body like Sean. Well, but Sean Burroughs, the the, oh. the thing that actually ended up moving Sean Burroughs out of favor, George is. They wanted him to hit like his dad with power, and Sean Burrows was yeah, more of an a, a hitter for average. Jerko's not hitting for average. He has power. He has power, some power. He hasn't shown it. Seven home runs so far. Spent some time in AAA this year, too. Last year, he had 249 in 125 games. He had 23 home runs, and that's what got front office excited enough to offer him a multi year deal for a lot of money. Five for 35 million. His brother just uh, retired. Now he's an assistant coach at the collegiate ranks. I'm trying to remember which college. Just read about it. Jed's brother. 3 1 misses, so Rutledge will go to first. That's the third walk allowed by Hahn. And DJ LeMahieu will come to the plate. On his last start in a loss, he went five and two thirds, walked four, gave up four hits. Had a no decision, he went five and two thirds. So, yeah. For most walks, yeah, instead of going to go four, he threw 95 pitches in that game, six innings against the Dodgers. He won that game. And that fastball misses. He's missed glove side quite a bit with the fastball. The Hyundai League leaders brought to you by your Colorado Hyundai dealers. Highest average with the Rockies against the Padres. Chris Nelson who's now a Padre hit 358 against San Diego. DJ with a 351 average. Jay Payton's on that list. Jay when he left uh, Colorado eventually not directly but eventually ended up a San Diego Padre also now living in Edmond Oklahoma with his nine year old son coaching Little League Baseball there you go you'd like to know what's going on 
Jay, speaking of a small package you could hit, Jay Payton could hit. Georgia Tech product. There's Nelly. It's good to see Chris. He's got a bright smile on his face. And you know what? He's got a baby boy on the way. He and his wife got married in the offseason. He's all excited naturally about that. There's Glenn Hoffman with him. And you watched him literally grow up, George, when he was in Tulsa, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, sure did. Uh, number one draft pick. That uh, just unfortunately the, the wheels just kind of came off. He got to the big leagues. He's uh, starting to find his way back again. Good to see for him. And they're kind of using Chris as a super utility guy. He's got some starts with Bud Black at second, third, left field. Place in first base. Told them that's how Arizona's now using Jordan Pacheco. If you embrace it, you can get about eight or nine years in the big leagues. That ain't bad. And that's a, a huge accomplishment when that happens for you. Two and two on LeMayhew. Rutledge with the good wheels at first base. He takes off and check swing foul ball. Top of the fourth with two outs. I know where it's packed here tonight, George. The top of the Western Metal Supply Company. Look at the roof. Yeah, what's going on tonight? The fireworks? I don't know. There's a big conference in town. Well, there is that. It seems like this time of the year there's a lot of that going on here. Mariano shaded towards the line and right. DJ, majority of his hits are to the right side of the infield. So they're trying to pitch him away, play him away. Well, may you this year, 47 to hits to the right side of the second base 36 up the middle 14 to the left side. It's three and two so now Rutledge will officially be moving again. Broken bat, and that is over the bag. It's a fair ball. And Salarte throws out LeMayhew. That'll end the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Still a couple of bagels up on the board.
Bottom of the fourth inning, Smith, Alonso, Jerko, 3, 4, and 5 for the Padres against Jordan Lyles. Time for our Coors Timeless Moment. Well, it's October 6, 2001, and in his 2,439th career game, Tony Gwynn hit the 3,141st hit of his career. His final hit, it was a pinch hit double off the left-hander from Colorado out of the bullpen, Gabe White. And it's strange. This is our first trip back, and we're so used to, even though he wasn't always here, uh, you were accustomed to seeing Tony at some point during your trips into San Diego back in the past at Qualcomm and obviously in recent years here at Petco. And it had been said, you know, numerous times last month at his passing that as great a player as he was and great ambassador for the game, he truly was such a, a neat and kind person to visit with and you know, talk baseball or anything else. He really was a, an engaging personality. A very good communicator, whether it was an 8-year-old kid or a 25-year-old big leaguer, he had a way of presenting it that you understood where he was coming from. And it's been a tough year for baseball. Jim Fergosi, a close friend of mine, and Drew's and a scout manager, and, uh, been around for a long time. Jimmy, we lost Jimmy in the spring. Uh, Don Zimmer later on in the year, and then Tony. So it's been a tough year for baseball. And I'm sure I've, and I'm sure there's a lot of other guys that unfortunately have passed away over time and this year that uh, you're not mentioning their name, but these were three of the bigger guys in the game that meant a lot to the game of baseball. He just had a magic wand. When he told me one time, he said, you know, Fraser, what I really do to help my eyesight is I, I, I sit in a room and I track little white beads of light coming at me. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, Tony, nobody throws little white beads. He goes, oh, there's guys in the league that throw white beads, but I'm ready for them. And he was. Yonder Alonso takes a, a ball outside. Very rarely did he question a ball or strike with an umpire, but when he did, an umpire was like, you know what, Tony, you're probably right. I missed it. Yep. It was, it was a strike, and it was a pitch he could do something with. He was going to swing at it. Ooh, this ball's well hit All to right. right. It's got a turn, and it does not. A solo home run for Yonder Alonso. The first hit allowed by Lyles is a homer, and it's one nothing Padres, the seventh home run for the first baseman this year. 27 RBIs on the year for him also. You know, both pitchers have been wild within the zone, but they haven't given up a lot of hits. This was a ball out over the middle of the plate. He was set on the back leg and then used that extension with some big arm strength to drive the ball right there. And this is really an area in the park that you can carry it out of right down the right field line. They remember having conversations with Plesco and he gets so frustrated at this ballpark. I hit nine to the wall, Fraser. I hit nine. I mean, well, you, you talk better go lift more weights. You're just not strong enough anymore. Oh, he'd go crazy. He just, you know, just well, tough. Well, the worst thing about it for both Klesko and Nevin, they were vocal about it. it. They really allowed this park to get in their head. Two and zero on Jed Jerko. You know, another player that's with us right now. I saw him on the show so far. Benny Castilla. This park got into his head. You know, as far as hitting the ball out of the ballpark, he hit 35 for the Rockies, came over here as a trade to the Padres, and uh, I think he hit five or six and ended up retiring. 3 0 on the corner, 3 and 1. There's Benny. He and Ellis Brooks uh, still on the trip. Nice to have some of the former Rockies around. They were getting ready to suit up recently. The Struggles the Rockies have had scoring rocks. This ball is right to center field. The Jerko with a one out single. And bring up guys on the ground ball. Struck out earlier in his first at bat, and then you get into those hitters' counts and you get a ball squared out over the plate where they can get some extension on their arms, you know, give a pretty good chance for success. This ball ran, trying to be ran down by Drew Stubbs, knocked down and back in, uh, prevent him from advancing with one out, a chance to turn the double play.
Pitch to Grandal, and it's a breaking ball. It's high. And that's low, two and out. Lyles walked three in the first inning without incident because he had a double play sandwiched in there. He's fallen behind three and nothing on Grandal. One out, jerk goes at first base, and that's in there, three and one. A moment ago, Yonder Alonso pulled one just inside the foul pole down the right field line to get the Padres a one nothing lead. That was their first hit. Rockies had two hits, they've left five on. Well hit center field. Stubbs going back, still going back, hitting up the top, slips down. Stopping around second base was Jerko. He's going to get a green light. May have a play at a plate. The throw is in time. Out at the plate. Jerko looked back about 10 feet past second base, came to a full stop, restarted. Glenn Hoffman sent him, and the Rockies relay guns him at the plate for the second out. And a good play by Hoffman. You got to send him. They got to make two perfect throws, and the Rockies executed it perfectly. And Willene made sure he caught the baseball before applying the tag. Well, here's that deep drive as he went to jump. That's all that he could do is have to sit down. And then here's the throw from LeMayu right on the money. And then the tag on the knee, it looked like. And then you can see just what Drew said. Jerko froze, went back. Then he hit it, and here came the throw in. Oh, look at that tag one more time. I mean, well, the relay was absolutely perfect. He just came to a stop at the plate, and that's where Rosario able to tag him on the leg. Great throw by LeMayhew. 8 4 2 on that put out at the plate. And here's Reimer Liriano with a 1 0 count. Second big league at bat. And he gets a change up. Didn't like it much. 1 and 1. Got that it. hit him on the hand. Yep. Yeah. Like a lot of hitters, you know, you start that move. You come to swing at a ball coming at you 90. You got about split second to, to back up and not do it. Did that hit him or did that hit off the ball? Well, you're going to see it right here. Right off the knob of the bat. Drew, I think it got the knob of the bat. It sure looked that way. Probably just pinched his finger a little bit. He'd have to be a phenomenal act actor to uh, carry that on with that distance. So I'm sure it did pinch him a little bit. Well, that's four straight that have reached against Lyles, who had retired eight straight. We got two outs, first and second. Make a pitch here and get out of the inning. We'll shorten your inning up right now. Alexi Amarista. Absolutely right. I mean, 
probably doesn't feel that way to Jordan Lyles because of the home run, single, double, just hit a guy. But if you get Amarista, he gives up one run. That's it. One run ought not to beat you. Now Walt's talking to Ron Culpa. About whether or not that hit him. Normally, when it hits the flesh like that, you think that it's going to be a, you know, the ball will die. But I think that did hit the end of the bat. He he asked Dana Demuth to come down and ask him what he saw. And they're going to take a look at it. This manager's challenge is brought to you by Subaru's eyesight driver assist technology, a vigilant safety feature that gives peace of mind to every drive. So who's the crew chief on the umpires? Isn't it the first base umpire at Hickox? He the, the crew? I just saw Dana look down at him like, do you want to come over and do it? And he's like, Dan, go ahead. You're already there. I thought to do was the debut get yeah, Dana's the crew he, chief. Okay, yeah. well, he's the one over there with him right now. Check. I think it got the knob of the bat. Yeah. I do. I think it did. If you guys in New York are listening, let me help you out. Let's speed the game up. It hit the knob of the bat. What's the, what, what would the rule the be? I mean, if it hits your hand, it's it hits ball. your hand. And what if you overlap the, you know, the, you're, you're drafting to swing the bat towards the baseball. I've seen, I've seen guys take full swings to see what he calls it. And that put him at first base. They hit him. Well, these guys did. The guys in New York did. You know, if they're going to announce the umpire's crew every night at the stadium, they should um, uh, announce the umpire's crew's doing reviews in New York. Well, they switch them out. There's two of them in there, right? Two crews in there. There's yeah. two crews in there right now. I mean, you know, they should. They I should uh, announce who those crews are too. Amarista grounded to short his first time up. Grandal at second. Liriano's at first. Lyle's flying open a little bit, George. Just a little bit, letting the elbow drop. Jimmy and I talked about that this afternoon. It, you know, you have a tendency when you learn a new pitch like to change up. The last thing you want to do is let the elbow collapse to the center of the body and try to create the movement. You want to keep separation of the elbow from the body. But he has a tendency to do that when he gets his elbow separated up on top. He gets a lot of that right there. Ground ball out. Well, no harm done by the ensuing hits and the hit batter. But Yonder Alonso hit a home run. So it's one nothing Padres as we move to the fifth.
up one nothing as we go to the fifth inning next to me is ashton barrett ashton's originally from colorado now in san diego because his family is in the navy he did a cool thing tonight he got to take the first ball that is used in the game out to the mound this is part of the big brothers big sisters of san diego program your grandfather sent us an email said you're going to be doing this he said my 10 year old grandson ashton gets to go on the field pretty cool yeah it's probably the first time it's amazing I think you met one of the Rockies, too, who signed an autograph for you. Did you yeah. met Charlie? Who, who was it? Charlie Corberson? I think so. He, yeah, he signed my hat, which was pretty amazing. That is pretty cool. So you're out here in San Diego. I know your dad's in the Navy, and uh, you get to go into fifth grade this year, huh? Yeah. But he changed and put on all his Rockies gear, so give me a go, Rockies. Go, Rockies. All right, Ashton, thanks. And uh, Ashton had a thrill tonight, guys, before the game. Yeah, that, can, can you only imagine... Now, I know when I was five and I wore my Little League football uniform on the train from Springfield, Missouri for four hours to <laughs> St. Louis to meet, uh, oh, God, meet the football Cardinals and made a little trail for them to come out. And I said, man, these guys are big. They don't have any teeth and they got one bar. <laughs> I'll never forget it. John David Crow when he came up out yeah, of there. Yeah, there you go. You're telling stories again. They had leather helmets when you made that trip. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> one and one on Jordan Lyles. Actually, they were those fiberglass slash plastic with the leather s suspension. <laughs> there wasn't any pads. Yeah. One and two on Jordan. Who was the quarterback the Cardinals back then? You remember? I'd have to think about it. I mean, come on. That was 55 years ago. <laughs> A memory like an elephant. Uh -huh. Strike three. Four strikeouts now for Jesse Hahn. Well, get 40% off your online order every time the, the next day after every Rockies victory. The promo code's ROCKSWIN. PapaJohns.com is where you go. You can do that tonight. Blackman a single and a line drive to center field. On two hops to Alonso, two outs. And this ball game, George playing out like so many do at Petco. Just no base, basic arithmetic, and you're able to figure out the score. Sometimes, of course, feels you know you got to have a, a advanced degree in calculus. You're it, right, yeah. Drew Stubbs with two outs. Stubbs a pop out and a strikeout. Struck out on a curveball. That's a good curveball right there. Swing over the top, 0 and 2. And here's the contrast. Coors Field right now. This is both teams combined, averaging almost 11 and a half runs a game. That's the, that's the most in baseball, most home runs per uh, game in baseball, 2.59. You see Petco last in a lot of offensive categories. With, uh, another big curveball. That's his fifth strikeout, a 1 2 3 fifth inning. 1 0 on the Alonso home run.
over the Port of San Diego. Padres won, Rockies nothing. George Frazier and uh, Mark Scott. I'm Drew Goodman. 9 1 and 2 for the Padres in the fifth inning. Jordan Lyles will face Jesse Hahn first. And the fastball. A little bit high, ball one. One ball, one strike. Padres have won seven of their last ten. Won the final two ball games in Pittsburgh to take that series. Bouncing ball to third. Arenado's first chance of the ball game. It's our Toyota Talk inning, and our first question reads: I read that on Sundays BP is optional. How do teams determine if they should take BP on Sundays? Here's one thing to keep in mind as we answer that question: that is formal BP out on the field every day, even the days that most days. They hit out on the field. Players will take additional swings inside underneath the stadium in a cage. So it's not as if they start the game and hadn't swung the bat all morning. Well, the optional BP, too, it depends a lot of times on, uh, you know, what was the length of the game on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday before you get to Sunday? Were they long games? You know, does this guy, okay, he's going to be in the lineup. He's played in 28 of the last 29 games. You don't have to come in and hit if you don't want to. That same guy is going to go down and probably take a few swings. 45 minutes before he goes out on the field to play the game. Yeah, they get a lot of swings in, folks. I mean, you, you see some if you arrive at the park early out on the field in, and I put it in quotations, formal batting practice, but there's a load of swings that go on underneath in the cages. All these new stadiums have literally multiple cages on both sides. The Rockies have you know, two right outside their clubhouse. Hitting cage on the visitor side also. Will Venable with a 1 2 count. A lot of the new minor league parks, same way. I know that uh, 1 0 from Tulsa has three cages right back on the back side of their dugout. So it makes it pretty easy for the players that are DHing to possible pinch hitters to go back there and get their work in and get ready during the ball game. Yonner V. Solarte will come up with two outs and nobody on. George, what was your favorite pitch when you were playing? Strike one. <laughs> so that's a great one. You know what I, I tell care. kids that. Yeah, I that's the most important yeah. pitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, Get what's ahead. the best pitch in baseball? Strike one. I mean, for me, no, on, quite honestly, I, I really felt comfortable throwing the slider in any count. I really did. I, it was a pitch I developed uh, sophomore year in college and just kind of stayed with it. And uh, Steve Carlton helped me develop that, and Gaylord helped me develop that other pitch people talk about. Why am I rubbing the I back never of had my dry, neck? I never you, had, are you looking I, at me? I never had. Uh, really kind of dry skin on the back of my neck ever. <laughs> oh, oh and one on Solarte. You never put anything foreign on your skin. I never either. did. You can go and uh, I think it's a Hallmark card store and you can go in and there's a poster that actually states it right there for you. Nothing that wasn't uh, found the good old USA right. Uh, that's right. That's a change up on the inside corner. One and two and groaning is uh, Solarte. Well early on neither guy threw a strike now all of a sudden throwing a lot of strikes. You got to look where the umpire sets up. He moved right over there with Rosario. They rode the fastball up and in. They're going to be fouled back into the seats. Give you a little one time for an umpire looked at the catcher and go, hey, what do you think? I think it was a strike. Hey, hitter, what do you think? Took a poll. I thought it was a way. All right. Well, I thought it was a way, too, so it's ball one. Take a vote on that, every pitch. That basically is what happens, and he's the arbiter, uh -huh. and he has the final call. He breaks so. the tie. This is uh, in the air to left field. Dickerson waiting, and it's a quick inning. A 1-2-3 inning in the fifth for Jordan Lyles. one nothing, San Diego. Morneau will lead it off when we return.
Colorado Rockies baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Ram Trucks. The Ram 1500 is Motor Trend's 2014 Truck of the Year and first ever back-to-back -back champion. By 5-Hour Energy, 5-Hour Energy helps recognize those who, despite their own needs, put others first. And by McDonald's, now at McDonald's, you can enjoy a sweet, creamy McCafe iced coffee. Typical Petco Park affair. The Rockies trailing the Padres 1-0 in the sixth inning. Morneau, Arenado, Dickerson. Justin's been on twice. A walk and a single. Rockies have two hits. The Morneau base hit and Blackman leading off the ball game at a base hit up the middle that was smothered by Amaris to the shortstop, but he had no play. Rockies have had three other base runners, all walks allowed by Jesse Hahn. Here's the 1 0 from Hahn. And that is lined to right. Boy, this Morneau, he has a chance, he hit, George. Huh? He's got a chance to be pretty good, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. I like what you're seeing there. So the Rockies have the tying run on, leading off the sixth inning. And again, Morneau had to go down and get it. Well, he does a pretty good job of this. I mean, really good low ball hitter. Let's go back to hockey days. I mean, you see Larry Walker go down and get these. Todd Helton. Go down with that nice smooth swing to the right side, and he comes up with another base hit, a leadoff single in the middle of this order. Nolan has hit a fly ball to left and a fly ball to right. Rockies had first and third in the third inning with two outs when Arenado came up. And he hit a 2 1 pitch in the air to right. Nick Vincent. One thing we haven't talked about with Hahn being such a young pitcher and not that far removed from Tommy John surgery, and he's never thrown a ton of innings in his career. They want to be very careful with him. There was a piece in the Union Tribune today in San Diego that. Uh, Talking about that subject, and Han realized at some point he's going to get shut down this year. They haven't told him exactly when. Yeah, 92, 95, 88, 95, and 101 in his last six starts. That's how many number of pitches he had thrown. Good job by Nolan fighting off that curveball. You know, but the innings professionally, Frazier. Not many. No, I mean, he threw 67 plus 269 last year. With Tampa, and he threw 52 in his first professional season. And remember, actually, his first professional season, he didn't pitch at all because he was still mm -hmm. recovering from the, the Tommy John surgery. But the thing about it, you, what you try to do is you'll go 60 first year, you hopefully. Second year, you go to about 100. And then that third year, 130, and then, you know, slowly build it up. Unless you've got a horse like, you know, uh, Fernandez down in, 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 in Miami and even shut him down, he still didn't prevent the injury. So. You know, if you got a horse that's 6'5", 250, and uh, you're not worried about him because he can handle it, then you turn him loose. Otherwise, it's difficult to do. Uh, that fourth year, it's pretty much turn him loose year at 150 to 175. One and two on Nolan. For a high school kid, that's 21, 22, 23 years old. By the time they reach that, that, that level for a college guy, you know, he's 24, 25 years old. Depending on the workload they've had in college. This is a flare to center. It's going to drop. Morneau got a great read. He'll go first to third. Nobody out. Rockies in business here in the sixth inning. Little sand wedge over the second baseman Jerko's head. And I think that makes up for the long fly ball in the first. It went to the warning track. He went down and got the breaking ball. Flared it out over the head of Jed Jerko. But what's impressive is Morneau read it perfectly based upon the center fielder Venable where he was playing and coming to get the baseball. I and mean, there wasn't any hesitation by Justin getting the third base. Nice job of uh, running the bases. That's why when you talk about a player's speed and his ability to run bases, they're they're not united. Morneau's not the fastest guy, but he's a good base runner. 
Cut your bases, shorten your distance between the two. Read off of the bat, getting jumps off of the off the bat. He's Dickerson, and he lets the bat fly at the first pitch. I asked Walt today in the dugout about Dickerson. I said, "You ever make you laugh with his with his swings?" And he said, "Yeah, he goes all Adrian Beltre at times, landing as Reggie used to your former teammate mm -hmm. on his back knee." I want to watch and see what they do here. You know, they, they've undressed him inside twice when they've got a head strike one. I just want to see if Grandal goes back in there again or if he tries to stay away from it. He's asked for the fastball away. They've settled in. They will settle in on a fastball away. And it's off the plate. One ball, one strike. Tying run at third and more no. Arenado's at first. Outfield straight up. Dickerson yesterday in the 10th hit his 14th home run of the year. Guys that are active right now, that's tied for the club lead with Blackman. Obviously, Troy leads the club, but he's on the DL inside two and one. A little bitty kid bit you don't know about him, but he tied a 33 year old record in the South Atlantic League in 19. Uh, or 2011, I should say, at 10 RBIs in a game against Augusta. I believe it. He can hit. He's hit at every level. <laughs> Two one high and deep to right field. Way back and gone. Three run home run Corey Dickerson. And the Rockies take a three to one lead. They're not going to get cheated, I can tell you that. That was a very powerful swing on a breaking ball. Said he's hit at every level and he's hitting in the big leagues. Big time. 15th home run for Dickerson. Yeah, you can see that. I mean, it's a high breaking ball that he just set on, and Corey drove it into the seats in right field. Deep into the high, long, dry. Those are picturesque. Those are pretty to watch. Hahn goes from throwing a shutout to out of the ball game. After the first three have reached in the sixth inning, single by Morneau, single by Arenado, big fly Corey Dickerson, 3 1 Colorado. But on the Dickerson three run shot. He gave the Rockies a 10th inning lead yesterday. His 15th home run of the year. He and Nolan Arenado celebrate. 
Willene Rosario against Nick Vincent, who takes over for Jesse Hahn with nobody out in the sixth inning. 40th appearance for him. 446 earned run average, 34 in the third innings. High fastball. He gets uh, Rosario to take a hack at it. Now, Nick Vincent had some shoulder issues in the month of July, was on the disabled list. And since he's come off, nine scoreless outings. League hitting, as you see graphically, just 220 against it. Now this Padre Penn has the fewest losses in the big leagues, and their ERA of 232 is the best in the big leagues. That save percentage is outstanding, and that's in large part because of Houston's oh, yeah. street. And, and Houston's, Houston's gone now, but Benoit now the closer. This is a towering pop fly to shallow right. Liriano comes on, and he makes the catch one out. Josh Rutledge will come to the plate. Hey, thanks for tweeting in your questions last inning during Toyota Talk. For more answers to those questions, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash RootsportsRM. You know what's interesting about Dickerson, George? A lot of things. But um, the Mississippi native tonight, Frazier, is playing in his 162nd game. So you say, okay, well, what's he done for what is now a full major league season? 1-0 on Rutledge. Slider catches the corner. What do you got? Well, what I have, it. he has 15, excuse me, he has 20 home runs. He has 32 doubles. Nine triples, and he's driven in 66 runs and scored 82 runs in his first 162. That's pretty uh, impressive. That is very impressive. I thought his RBIs might be a little higher. Well, keep in mind, last year wasn't always in a honey spot when it when it comes to uh -huh. driving yeah, I runs. I mean, just in. with 49 this year. I mean, as good as he is at it, I thought it might be a little bit higher. Jimmy Wright on the telephone, not calling his mom, but calling the bullpen. Want to come inside on Rutledge. Two and two on Josh. The Padre lineup in the next inning will have Seth Smith, Alonzo, and Jerko. Swung through a little cutter. Lyles has thrown 93 pitches. That's why you're seeing activity. Well, more walks for Lyles in this start than there has been in a while. Book on Hahn, five plus, three runs, all earned, five hits, three walks, five strikeouts. It appears to be Matt Belial who threw one pitch and got the win yesterday. What did you tell us? What did you say yesterday? Five or six guys it's, had thrown one uh, pitch or less in Rockies uniform and got a win, or just in baseball? No, no, it's happened three times this year in baseball. It's the fifth time it's happened to a Rocky, one pitch or less. And we explained yesterday how it could be less. Well, Alan Embry came on and picked a guy off in 2009, uh -huh. right. and then never threw, Rock, yeah, never threw yeah. a pitch. A Rocky scored. In the bottom half of the inning, he was the pitcher of record. Thus, he got a win without ever throwing a pitch. LeMahieu oh. takes a strike at the knees. Fastball slider combination from Nick Vincent. And all the runs have been supplied via the home run, which is not often the case here. LeMahieu is gone, but the Rockies got a couple of hits in front of this swing from Corey Dickerson. Hanging hook, and he hit it 378 feet for a three-run home run.
Here's our First Bank game recap. Put the seventh inning stretch to good use. Sign up for First Bank's free check at efirstbank.com. Well, the Rockies have a 3 to 1 lead. Corey Dickerson, a three run home run a few moments back. Yonder Alonso hit a home run in the fourth to initially give the Padres the lead. Jordan Lyles will continue on here in the sixth inning. He's allowed that uh, single run, three hits. He's walked three, struck out four. Seth Smith, Yonder Alonso, and Jed Jerko. Smith a walk and a bouncer to first and that pitch misses ball one. Smith is at 295 at home. And Ooh, he nice. waves at that pitch. Big moving fastball away from it. Two for eight against Lyles with a home run. 1-1 one, one, breaking ball. And Rutledge had him positioned perfectly. Off the bat, you think that's a base hit, except Lyles was, excuse me, Rutledge was shaded right up the middle, and it's a 6-3 first out. Well, when you pitch to the defense, they ran the sinker away from him. Pretty quick bat, though. The ball was a little bit elevated. The lucky part there was it did not hit the bag. Could have very easily jumped up on top of the bag. And if it hits that bag, you don't tell them, and then all bets are off. But it skipped right over the top of it. Rutledge with the snap throw to first to get Smith. That'll bring up Alonso. A walk in the ball he pulled just inside the foul pole to right for a home run. Fastball too tall. Alonso was born in Cuba, moved to the States when he was 10. He went on to the University of Miami. Way outside, 3-0. There's Matt Belial down in the Rockies bullpen. He's been throwing since the inning started. 3-1. With that fastball to run a count 3-1. and one. See how the process begins pretty early. Behind Matt. His good friend LaTroy Hawkins was stretching. and Boy, LaTroy threw the ball well yesterday, didn't he, in the 10th? Hit 95 once. Struck out the side. First time this year he has struck out the side. In order. So one out, one on. Jerko coming up. Time for you to tweet us your Rockies fan photos. Use the hashtag CO fan photo for a chance to have it shown during the ball game. It's brought to you every night by AT&T. Walt's going to wander out now as pitch counts at 101, and it's just his second start since coming off the disabled list where he missed two months with that broken left hand. He's on the plus side. Lyles. I mean, if that stare saying, let me stay in, can't imagine uh, how you'd interpret it any differently, but uh, Walt knows that he's got to go to the pen right now. Three to one to score.
And uh, for the next week or so, we're going to bring you our farm report. It's time for the farmland. What's cooking down on the farm? Farmland. Passion for pork since 1959. And Tapia is having a very nice year down in Asheville. I just want to throw it out there. 35 and 15. They lead the South Atlantic South Division by four ball games right now. Ryan McMahon, a lot of home runs, 15 and 92 on the RBIs, average of 279. Since the tell of 13 and 1. Drew, help me out. Joe. Joe? All right, we're going to go with Joe. He's 11 and 5, 444. Hemion is his last name. Uh, starter down there, it's 11 and 5. Also, Mr. Dahl had left and moved to high A. He was a part of that ball club. We'll get to get that to a little bit later on. But uh, the Asheville team has been outstanding all year long. One of the better minor league teams in all of baseball. Yoheni Hemion. You had it. There you go. Good job. Who You're helped welcome. you out, Tavis or Kenny? Uh, the are there people in my ear? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, the, you didn't know who that was talking? <laughs> Try not to acknowledge them. I understand. One ball, one strike on Jed Jerko. And a chance to flip it. Alonzo, even though he has six, six stolen bases, not particularly quick. Jerko, not either. Get a ball on the ground, gets a double play. That's that punch to three. right for a base hit. Alonzo's going to go first to third. Safe. Oh, wow. Arenado, he, Arenado calling time and looking for Walt to come on out. He feels right, that he argue. had him out. Yeah, you know, it's so it's so eager now for players to want to turn and start to argue and go, okay, hold on, never mind. I'm going to talk to talk to the manager and let him come out here and look at this. Good throw by Blackman. Oh, an outstanding throw by Charlie. Right on the money. Well, you yeah, know, Dana was right on top of it, but I think he might have got it. You know, the, Alonso went to the swim technique. But he still tagged him on the chest. Did he get the tag down before the left hand? Here comes the swim because he's going to be out. I thought he got a left hand for the, the right hand before the left hand got there. Yeah, maybe it was on that left hand. Wow. And you know what? They're, they're not contested. Well, they can't. You know what? He doesn't have a challenge left. Remember the challenge oh, that's right. from yeah, earlier. That's right. Oh man, forgot about that. And that's that's a rough one. You can't pick and choose when they're going to happen. And Rockies used their challenge because it sure looked like Alonso was out. First and third now with one out. And Grandal's at the plate. Two quick fastballs, 90-91 from Belial ahead to count 0-2. Curveball, one and two. Ron Dahl hitting 221 from the left side. He's a switch hitter from the right side. George, he's hitting 098. When he first came up, I thought he was going to really hit. Well, he hit all those home runs at Coors Field when he first came up, too. Remember that. 1 2. And snap throw to third. And it's dropped by Arenado. And that will. Allow the runner at first Jerko to move up. So it's going to be an error on Nolan. Well, Nolan tapped himself in the chest, too, because what he was trying to do is catch and tag. And he ended up just, it just hit right off the end of the glove. Yeah, his haste to get the tag down, he hadn't quite caught the baseball yet. Snap throw. You can see the walk down by Alonzo and then the throw coming down. He's dead. I mean, if, if Nolan's able to catch it, he's out at third base. But because he didn't, the ball looked like it might have cut a little bit, caught him on the thumb as he's trying to tag down. Good hustle after the ball, but now you take away the double play. Need a strike out here on the 2 2 count. Yeah, that's low, 3 and 2.
Grandal a double in the fourth inning. He struck out in the second. Two in scoring position. The Rockies leading by two in the sixth. And that's inside. So the walk loads the bases. Does set up a force all the way around. And the kid Reimer Liriano is coming up. Making his big league debut. He's 0 for 1 and was hit by a pitch. That's where the review was. Back in the fourth mm -hmm. inning. On a ball that hit. Yeah. They the thought knob of the bat. Right. He was awarded first base. Walt argued that it. Should have been a foul ball. And they reviewed it. The review was upheld. Well, the suites of party facilities at Coors Field provide a great atmosphere to entertain VIP clients or celebrate a special event with friends and family. Call 303 Rockies for more information. So here's Liriano, the much Heralded prospect for San Diego. Just got called to the big leagues a rod this morning. And that's strike one on Liriano. Powerfully built kid. Six foot and 230 pounds. Take advantage of his aggressiveness right now if you're Matt Belial. You know, he's got to be feeling. I'm going to hit a grand slam. It's my first game. This is to center field. Stubbs will make a sliding catch. And he pops up. The run is going to score. So it's three to two. That's the second out. Liriano has his first major league RBI. Still, of course, does not have a big league hit. And that'll bring up Amarista. A ball inside. He hit a line drive right at Stubbs. Sinking line drive. Stubbs, great catch. Comes in, catches it, pops to his feet, and then attempts to strike to the plate. Cut off by Morneau. Then you don't allow anybody to move up. Smart play by Morneau instead of letting this ball go through. And once he hit the ground, that bought enough time for the run to get in. That'll close the book on Lyles. Jordan goes five and a third. And he allows two runs on four hits. He walked two, hit a batter, and struck out four. This may be the one shot the Padres have right now to try to get that uh, third run across. And Belisle's wanting to make sure that Willene and him are on the same page with what they're trying to attack on. And as a veteran guy, you got to take charge of this at bat and go with what you feel like is the best pitch to get the best result. Amarista to two for seven in his career versus Matt Belisle. Jerko at second base as Amarista swings and misses. It's 0 and 2. And first base is Grandal. Amarista handles the bat really well. You take a fastball away, he'll try to punch it through the hole in left. Corey Dickerson has shortened up in left field just for that reason. One and two. It's 
two and two. We'll see on the fourth strike zone. We'll lean out to to make sure he and Belial were on that same page. See him drop to the knee, but the pitch came up. Obviously crossed up on his signals because it caught the bottom of the fourth strike zone. Lane dropped to the knee as if to block it. Tommy Medica in the on deck circle, the pitcher spot. Rockies hope it doesn't get there till next inning. Breaking ball fouled off. Three to Colorado. This ball line toward Dickerson, and he was positioned, as you said, perfectly. That ends the inning. Padres get a run. It's 3 2 as we go to the seventh. with a 3-2 lead. Corey Dickerson with his 15th home run here tonight. Let's go back to yesterday in Phoenix at Chase Field where Ben Paulson hits his first big league home run in his first at-bat of the game left on left against Wade Miley. He took it deep and gave the Rockies a 2-0 lead. They would eventually win yesterday in extra innings. You can see that one got a little water out in right field. And I asked Ben Paulson today if he did get that baseball. The water shows a little waterlogged too. So uh, that's, that's pretty cool. And it's actually going to go to my grandfather. He has, uh, I think, every single baseball that's ever been given to me down at his house in, or up in his house in Wisconsin. We met his grandfather, George Myers, at Coors Field. He was there for his first game, and he's got all those baseballs that he's talking about. He also told me that it was somebody's 25th wedding anniversary out by the pool at Chase Field, so he sent an autographed ball out there and said happy 25th. But he's got that baseball, his first home run, guys. Neat moment for Ben Paulson. Absolutely. It's been a lot of neat moments, Mark, for Ben Paulson yeah. in his first eight big league games. He's got a hit in all eight. That's pretty good. Brandon Barnes will pinch hit here in the seventh inning for Matt Belisle. Nick Vincent's still out there. And Barnes swings through a first pitch fastball. Speaking of grandfathers, Brandon's granddad has come down from Orange County to San Diego to see his grandson play. Those two are very, very close. Got to meet him before the ball game. And then Brandon told me that everything he's learned about sports came from his granddad. 
A lot of times, it's, I go through when I'm home in Oklahoma, uh, Granddad, can you babysit? So, you know, while you're babysitting, if you come to my house, you've got a chance to watch some sports or, or go play some catch or hit, take some ground balls. Throw some BP. Yep, Barnes. No, that ain't happening. Barnes, uh, 47 hit bats, 14 hits to a couple of home runs, five RBIs as a pinch hitter. I'm a front toss and good. I'm really good at that. Can I explain something to yes. you? You're 59. You I know, but I, my knees got, are 108 and my back's 208. You can, you know what? You can sit on a bucket still, right? Well, I do that. I sit on a bucket and throw underhanded to him. I got a machine that I hit ground balls to him. How do you like that? Turn it side, side to side. It's perfect. Feed it. Yeah. Well, Robert's very kind to me. They got a big indoor facility, and it's my own private playpen with my grandkids. So it's nice. One ball, two strikes on Barnes. Grand had a good ball game and a start yesterday. It's outside. Barnes, three for five yesterday, and he leads all, not only National Leaguers, he leads all the big leaguers with those 14 pinch hits. Reed Johnson's had a nice career. He's played a long time, man. Vincent strikes out Barnes. And that'll bring up Blackman with the Rockies up three to two. Now Charlie's gotten robbed tonight. A couple of balls hit really hard into left center field. They ran it down. Venable did. Then he had a hard ground ball to first. And a single back in the first. Blackman hits it off the end of the bat to Salarte, two outs. Well, Vincent done a pretty nice job. Come in, retired five in a row. Boone Logan's throwing for the Rockies. They come on next inning. Drew Stubbs with two outs. Slider was inside. Stubbs 0 for 3, popped out and struck out twice. Jesse Hahn got him with a good curveball in the fifth inning. Here's the one one and he waved at it. It's one and two. A tight little slider. slider. Yeah it is and I mean he can just paint it to the outside corner but by throwing in and up it opens up the whole outer half of the plate for Vincent. Fastball's not that overpowering. Rundall's even confused. And they go right back to that slider. Now let's see if he puts a little bigger move on it. Up, oh, going hip side slider. And it's there. Third strikeout, two innings of work for Nick Vincent. Stretch time in San Diego. Rockies up three to two on the Padres.
Time for the Cooney Lexus look back. No score. Yonder Alonso hit a home run just inside the foul pole down the right field line to give the Padres a 1-0 lead that came against Jordan Lyles. But then with two men on, Jordan Lyles returned the favor. He hit a three-run shot against Jesse Hahn. Rockies had a 3-1 lead. It's now 3-2. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, 9-1-2. Coming up for the Padres, look back brought to you by Cooney Lexus. Open in Greenwood Village as well as Colorado Springs. So Logan comes on. It'll be his 30th appearance. So 25 three to one hits. walk to strikeout rate or strikeout to walk ratio. Yeah, you like to see that part. The home runs jump out at you a little bit too many. Five and 22 in the third innings. Abraham Almonte is going to be the pinch hitter. First batter efficiency very good for Boone Logan. 66%. Well, Monte steps in. He's still glancing down to see where Arenado is positioned. And he rips it to set right, left center field, and this one's going to roll to the wall. Yeah, he thought about making the turn and taking off, but a really strong throw by Stubbs. He'll end up with just a double. He had thoughts. Big breaking ball that came from out to, on the first base side to the middle of the plate. Now Monte set right on it, drove it right out into the gap, and had that backspin where it just carried Stubbs. Look at this throw. Boy, it's quick. Came around there, he thought about it, and he just hit the brakes when he got to second base. Will Venable, 0 for 2 in a walk. And Venable, not surprised. Yep, not even messing around, trying to pull the baseball. He's one for square two. to bunt. One for two in his career versus Boone Logan. There's no act activity at all in the Rockies bullpen. The glove, fortunately, no advancement by Almonte. One ball, one strike. That pitch looked pretty close. Down low, two and one. Doing a pretty good athlete, can get off of the mound, so depending on where Venable bunts is. Twice he's had the angle of the bat to push it hard up the third baseline. Make Arenado come get it. Takes it up that line. And Morneau with the throw to DJ will get the out. Maybe one out. Now Monte at third. Well, the Rockies in the baseball tomorrow fund will hold their annual baseball equipment drive prior to the game on Saturday, August the 16th against the Cincinnati Reds. New and used equipment can be dropped off at all gates. Proceeds benefit a precious child and a Jessica. Give, uh, give sports a drive if you can, please. So 
So the infield comes in. Ron Hervé Solarte at the plate. Logan misses inside, ball one. This ball lifted a deep left and it's gone. Solarte a two run home run and the Padres are back on top four to three. This is the third home run for Solarte. This Padre team playing with much more confidence. Fastball out over the plate. Really got the hands on the inside part of the ball and out of his body. And at 92 miles an hour, carried this ball out of the ballpark. The sixth home run this year, Boone Logan's given up, which is a high number for the number of innings pitched. You see this ball land about four or five seats, five or five rows up into the seats. So Larte hit six home runs in the American League. And that's his third, as I mentioned, since the trade. And it gives the Padres a seventh inning, four to three lead. Rockies were up three to one. And now Jordan Lyles will get a no decision. And the woes of the Rockies bullpen continue. Seth Smith at the plate. Double sack bunt, two run home run. Crowd of 28,591 just announced here in San Diego. It's about a thousand more than they've been averaging throughout the summer. Yeah, really nice crowd for a Monday night here. Well, nice. all the, except, you know, when school starts, football practice starts, there's a lot going on. 1-1 one, one on Smith and that's way inside 2 and 1. Adam Adovino is throwing down in the Rockies bullpen trying to get loose out of Adovino good a couple of nights ago in Arizona. Been very good of late. A nice slider, and it's two and two. Three and two. Ford strike zone tells you where the pitches were located. To Seth Smith, 326 at bats now for Seth Smith. 12 home runs, 38 RBIs, one stolen base. He's hit 24 doubles. And Smith lines it to left for a base hit. Bring up another left-handed bat. One the Rockies have not retired tonight. Yonder Alonso, the former Miami Hurricane, a walk, a home run, a single. He has scored two runs tonight. Autoglass issues, trust Safe Flight. Online at safeflight.com. On the phone at 303 287 5000 Good pitch, and it's a strike at the knees. Now Adam Adovino throwing. He was hoping to take the baseball in the eighth inning with a lead.
One two and that misses away two and two. Three balls, two strikes, went to the slider again and missed. Strike three, got him with that slider, two outs. Two gone, that'll bring up Jerko. A big sweeper right here. Good pitch out on that outer half. Couldn't pull the trigger. Thought it was going to be a ball up and in. He gets a strikeout. A good pitch by Boone Logan. Another trip for Walt Weiss to the mound. Ladovino was warming up. Jerko, a right handed hitter. Four three Padres back in a moment. Game. Well, look at that little guy. He's got his dinger stuffed animal. Pretty good day. Happy little fella. Tweet your photo to hashtag CO fan photo for an opportunity to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Dinger made a road trip last week. He was in Tulsa, at 1 Oak Field. Is that right? Yeah, hanging out, man. They loved him. Jed Jerko is going to hit against Adam Adovino. Seth Smith at first. Rockies had a 3-1 lead an inning ago. They now trail 4-3. Four, four runs, eight hits for San Diego. Three runs, five hits for the Rockies, and an error. Well, Adam Adovino did a really good job yesterday. Well, he sure did. Came out of the bullpen. Got the strikeout outside corner. Good fastball. Painted it up again on Marte. It's a big swing and miss. And strikes out the side yesterday in his one inning of work. One ball, one strike.
sliders low two and one. It's a called strike. Got after that fastball. Even cross fired a little bit. Stepped across his body at 94. Jerked a couple hits tonight. Both singles. Smith a conservative lead. 2-2. Short Rutledge will flip it to LeMahieu just in time. In the inning, a two run home run from Solarte has given the Padres a four to three advantage as we go to the eighth. Scott Helton is going to be fed it all weekend long. Next week when, Rock, when the Rockies take on the Cincinnati Reds. And on Sunday, his jersey will be officially retired. And we'll have a one-hour special pregame show next Sunday. So make sure you join us at 1 p.m. Mountain Time for that. It's going to be a neat weekend and a special afternoon. And you know what? The Padres drafted him out of high school in the second round they tried very hard and came very close to signing him uh, and they did not obviously but he tormented them in his career 338 average at petco park he had 10 home runs here 22 doubles and of opponents he's number one in a whole slew of categories against san diego at petco and of course uh, todd played a number of games at qualcomm also kevin quackenbush is in the ball game. The first pitch to Justin Morneau is in there for a strike. Justin, a walk, a single, and another single in the sixth. He came around on the Dickerson three-run home run. 39th appearance for Quackenbush out of the University of South Florida. There might be something growing in that beard. Looks that way. 
Yeah, the beard's a big trend now, obviously around all the baseball. This guy was drafted to be a reliever. You know, a lot of times, got to look. You know, guys start initially and then they get moved to the pen. It's like a poor man's Brian Wilson. Two and one. Three and one. Padres grabbed him in the eighth round of the 2011 draft. Hard throw, ran him to the big leagues in a hurry, and he grabbed a hold of it. I mean, he really thrived on uh, being here at the big league level. Wanted to be here. Wanted to pitch the eighth inning. Well, his first full year in pro ball, George, he was the minor league pitcher, not just San Diego's. He was the minor league relief pitcher of the year. He had 27 saves at Lake Elsinore. An 0.94 ERA. And a strikeout of Morneau to begin the eighth. No, but it, it's going to show it just barely caught the bottom of the fourth strike zone on this fastball. Coming right at him. I can see where Morneau wouldn't be disappointed thinking that that was a strike. It didn't look to be. Started to walk up the line at 6 4. Quackenbush makes the walk to get it from third base. Arenado one for three. He singled in the sixth inning in front of Dickerson's home run. And this is fouled off. Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies Taco Special. That's when the Rockies score seven or more in a ball game. Trailing 4 3 tonight. Last series in San Diego, Nolan went six for 14. He went. Yep. Thought he had held up. The bat stayed back, but the bat stayed out in the in the hitting plane. He gets up called a strike. You hear that chant? You got the quack chant going. We got to be more creative. Come on. Quack and Bush? What else are you to call it? I understand. They're just doing the quack, yeah. quack, quack. When you look how it's spelled, they can say quake, 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 too, right? Yeah, exactly. Ball and two strikes on Nolan. And he got him on the slot. Slider well out in front of it. You can see Nolan 82 miles an hour after a couple of 90 mile an hour fastballs. Now the first 10,000 of the Rockies Royals game on Tuesday, August 19th, you're going to receive a coupon for a dollar hot dog. Get your tickets now. Now well, see if Corey Dickerson can do it again. He's been magical the last two days. Home run in the 10th yesterday. Three run home run to give the Rockies a lead in the sixth inning. Got a hanging hook from the starter, Jesse Hahn, who hasn't given up many of those. George, just the fourth home run he's allowed in his career. Of course, his career is all this yeah. year, but still, yeah, it's, it's nice still how many. 70 something innings now, 65. They got a fastball at 91, one that he's looking for, just swung through it. And he struck out the side. Quacken Bush. Fans Morneau, Arenado, and Dickerson in succession. 
Four three Padres middle of the eighth. What's next? Schedule the remainder of August after the Rockies depart San Diego. It's home for Todd Helton's weekend. The Reds will be in town for ball games. Day off Monday, Kansas City comes to town for two. Another day off, and then the Marlins are in, and then the Rockies go back to the West Coast. They'll take on the Giants over four days in the latter part of August. Juan Nicasio is on the mound for the Rockies here at the bottom of the eighth inning, trying to keep it a one-run game, get the Rockies a shot in the ninth. Juan now trying to reinvent himself as a reliever after years as a starting pitcher, including most of this year. Well, just let him come out and let it fly. You know, just come out, throw it hard as you can, go right at hitters. Don't try to think your way through an inning, just let it go. Started to grab a hold of that, of that at times. At Triple A. We'd like to see things change around a little bit. We'll see what happens. 75 innings so far at the big league level. First pitch at 94 is down low to Grandal. Grandal, Liriano, Amarista. Six, seven, and eight in the eighth inning. And here's the 1 0, and that's bounced to second. That's played by LeMayhew. You got to get that hop. And once you do, it's relatively routine play. That'll bring up Reimer Liriano in his major league debut. He has struck out. He's been hit by a pitch, controversial one. And he had a sack fly to center field. So officially he's 0 for 1 in his major league debut. Six foot 230 pounder signed as a 16 year old out of the Dominican Republic. That elbow guards on like he's a defensive back. The Ford strike zone is powered by built Ford tough trucks built better built stronger built Ford tough. No wonder Ford F series are the best selling trucks 37 years straight. Slider and that two misses two and zero. Oh.
to third Arenado guns it across two outs two outs and that'll bring up Alexi Amarista in the ninth inning the Rockies will have Willeen Rosario Josh Rutledge DJ LeMahieu Joaquin Benoit is now the closer with Houston Street pitching north of here in Anaheim. Amarista takes a strike at the knees. Two and one, pulled the bat back. Again, any auto glass issues? That's your windshield. Trust Safe Flight, safelight.com on the phone at 303 287 5000 to make an appointment. Another foul ball. Boy, Arnado busting. Is he going to get there? Wow. Too short. Good hustle, Nolan. On the ground to Morneau. He'll go to the bag. Good inning for Juan Nicasio. We'll go to the ninth inning. The Rockies will have to rally against Joaquin Benoit. Down four to three. Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Ram Trucks, the Ram 1500 is Motor Trend's 2014 Truck of the Year. First ever back-to-back -back champion. In San Diego on a Monday night, the Rockies had a 3-1 lead. They now trail 4-3, top of the ninth, trying to get something done against Joaquin Benoit. But first, we go back to the Rocky Mountains, our Route Sports studios and Jenny Kavnar. Jenny. That sounds like a wonderful plan, Jenny. Thank you. So Benoit now assumes the role of closer with Houston Street pitching for the Angels. And so far, he's done very well. He's saved five of six. New role for him, obviously. 47 and a third. 26 hits, giving up 55 strikeouts. He can do that. 
The Rockies lineup, well, Lean Rosario is 0 for 1 in his career. Rutledge's 0 for 1. DJ has not faced him. You pick where you're going to take your shot with your left-handed bat, and that'd be Ben Paulson. Benoit last year, really for the first time in his career, was asked to work the ninth inning. And with the Tigers, he saved 24 ball games. He had a 2.01 ERA last year in Detroit. He was originally signed by Texas, and the scout that signed him, Omar Manaya, who now works obviously in the Padres front office. He's sitting right next door to us, in fact. They're having a front office meeting over there. The new uh, GM in town. Tons of guys in the booth. Well, the thing about it, with the, with Wayne coming up, even Rutledge, you got a shot with two swings to uh, maybe get a ball out of here. Wayne tonight is 0 for 3. A couple of fly balls to right and a ground ball to second. And the slider is on the inside corner. Strike one. Checked his swing. No, according to Ed Hickox, Willene went. But the problem is, I think he went out, he stopped his swing in time, but the bat stayed out over the plate. There wasn't any pullback at all. That's why he called it. Oh, and two on Rosario. That's five straight strikeouts of Rockies hitters by the Padres. Goes back to Nick Vincent. Well, he wasn't going to give him a fastball, I can tell you that. And there's the slider to end, end it all. It's six of seven. Seven of their last nine have been strikeouts. And the Rockies have been retired ten batters in a row. Josh Rutledge has a couple of strikeouts and a walk, and he swings and misses. Fastball at 96. Rockies have not had a base runner since Dickerson hit that three run bomb back in the sixth inning with nobody out. Outside. He's got an array, doesn't he? Through all sliders to a lane, get strikeout. He's showing a 96 mile an hour fastball, now an 83 mile an hour changeup. There's three pretty good weapons to have. Pitching in the ninth, and that's nasty right there. Fastball just a little bit high, two and two. I think Benoit thought he had the strikeout. And the foul tip is held by Grandal. Two outs in the ninth. And that's six. Consecutive strikeouts. Now ben Paulson's going to pinch hit here for LeMay here. 
Walt Weiss looking to get a big swing of the bat from Paulson. A big swing of the bat yesterday from Ben. Yeah, no question about it. I went down and got a pitch on a slider. Took it out in the right center field. Got out of the ballpark in a hurry on the back wall of the swimming pool in Arizona. Paulson has hit in all eight games in which he's played. And the first pitch in there, strike one. Look at the arsenal and you wonder yeah. why was he not closing prior to last year when he was 36. There's a lot of times that last three outs of the game they can't do it mentally. Physically it's there but mentally it's not. Well, I mean his stuff's filthy. Well, filthy but maybe on the mental side have he struggled with it. He not struggle tonight though. Oh two. And he went back to the changeup. Off the change up, he wants the fastball. One and two on Ben Paulson. That was overthrown a bit. Two and two. But it was hard. 96. I don't know why guys fool around. And uh, that kind of a change up slider mix, too. Show you fastball if you want, but if they missed it twice, come back with that hard change up again. Meaning not velocity, but hard movement down. Rondahl sets up the way. And it's three and two. Good job by Paulson. Mike McHenry's come out on deck hoping for an opportunity. Here's the 3 2. And he got it. He got him on a cheap job. Seven straight Rockies struck out to end this ball game. Eight of their last nine. Nine of their last 11. It was downhill after Corey Dickerson hit that three run home run to give Colorado a short lived 3 to 1 lead. Padres win it tonight 4 to 3 in the first of three here at Petco. The Rockies fall to 46 and 72. The Padres resurgent in the second half, improved to 55 and 62. Our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. The two run home run by Solarte, which turned a 3 2 deficit into a 4 to 3 advantage. The winning pitcher is Nick Vincent, and the save goes to Joaquin Benoit. The losing pitcher is Boone Logan. Four to three, the final. The Padres over the Rockies. We go to our Root Sports crew in Denver, led by Jenny Cap.